Hi everyone and welcome back to Planting for Wildlife. We're in March now, so at least in the Northern Hemisphere, we're officially in spring. I think today feels like the first time the weather actually feels a bit spring-like too. In the Northern Hemisphere at least, it's the perfect time to be planting roses for the year ahead. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at David Austin roses, or as David Austin refers to them as, English roses. David Austin was a rose breeder who lived from 1926 to 2018, based in Shropshire, UK. They mainly grow all of their roses in the UK, in Shropshire, but they now also grow roses in Australia and in the US. I know for a fact there's a lot of David Austin fans in the US. David Austin roses aren't categorised officially as a different type of rose, however, the wider horticultural world refer to them simply as English roses. So what is an English rose? English roses are bred to combine the rosette or cup-shaped flower, the beautiful scent and general characteristics of an old rose, but in a wide range of colours and crucially repeat flowering. One of the things I love about David Austin roses is how resilient they are to pests and diseases. And the reason for this is that David Austin actually stopped spraying their rose fields. When they did this, a lot of the rose varieties just died and ultimately David Austin just stopped selling those roses. In their view, if the rose variety wasn't strong enough to survive on its own two feet without the use of chemicals, then it wasn't a strong enough rose to sell to their customers either. I think this is a really bold move and just an amazing thing to do to help gardeners be as green as we possibly can be. Even now, they review their variety of roses constantly, and if any varieties are becoming more susceptible to pests and diseases, they actually just discontinue them. I first got the bug for David Austin roses, visiting my first Chelsea flower show back in 2019. The David Austin display at these flower shows is absolutely magnificent. They had pretty much every rose they breathed there, and I was really just going around all of the roses, smelling each one and seeing which one I liked the most. Out of all of those, the one that really stuck with me is a beautiful pink rose called Princess Alexandra of Kent that I now have in my garden. After visiting the show, of course, I wanted more roses in my garden, but we didn't really have space at the time. We had a smaller plot, so a lot of them went into containers, and a lot of those roses in containers are still with us now in this garden, having moved house twice. If you're looking for inspiration around David Austin roses, there really is a huge amount on their website, so I'd check that out. Some really nice photography on there. I've also got a few books here um, that I'll show you as well. So the first one I'm going to show you is David Austin, The English Roses. Now this is quite a chunky book and when you go through it, it's got a huge amount of history about David Austin roses, about all of the different varieties of rose, not just David Austin, all of the other ones as well. It's a real rose history lesson, um, which is really nice. Um, but quite quite a heavy read if you're just looking for a, a bit of a coffee table book. Um, it does though have beautiful illustrations of all of the different roses and a brief description of them as well. So it's a really nice book. If you're looking for more just a coffee table book kind of photography and a book that's going to give you some inspiration around how to combine David Austin roses perhaps with other plants in your garden, then I'd probably get this book. Um, so this is just full of beautiful photography. Um, just show you a few here. Yeah, so this is much more photography rather than illustrations. Um, and as you go through, it's got lots of beautiful photos. And yeah, I think that that's a really nice example there actually of combining um, a pink David Austin rose with, with a salvia, which is perfect combination. The south is nice and wildlife friendly too. Aside from the books, David Austin also always publish an annual Handbook of Roses. This is the latest 2024 one. It's only been out about a week or so, and thanks to my mum for lending me the book. I've spent many an hour thumbing through these uh, previously. They always have beautiful photography, lots of inspiration, and it is a bit smaller if you just want to put it in your bag and on the train or something. One thing just to note is that I'm not receiving anything from David Austin for doing this video. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. Um, I just love their roses and I wanted to share that with you. In terms of planting for pollinators and for wildlife, to be honest, David Austin roses as a whole probably aren't right at the top of the list. And the reason for that is that some of the varieties have been bred with so many petals that the petals actually obscure the centre of the flower and the stamen, meaning that the bees and any other pollinators can't get to them. 
However, David Austin can help you out here because on their website and in their annual handbook, they actually assign a number of symbols to each of the roses. And one of these symbols is a bee, which means it's a pollinator friendly plant. So it really actually makes it quite easy to find your perfect pollinator friendly, beautifully scented English rose. I've grown quite a few varieties of David Austin roses over the last five years, and also seen a lot in the gardens that I photograph. I've pulled together my top three pollinator friendly roses, and the first one on that list is conveniently on the front cover of the handbook this year. It's called Lady of Shalott. As you can see, it has a beautiful coppery colour, and I think this colour really plays nicely into any contemporary planting scheme and goes beautifully with certain companion plants like salvia. It has a really nice tea scent, but I think the thing that stands out the most about Lady of Shalott is how much of a strong grower it is. It grows to four feet by four feet and really puts on a lot of strong new growth every year. This is one rose that I could happily put in a mixed border and it will hold its own. Whereas some of the David Austin roses that are less vigorous are probably best off in a pot or somewhere where they're not going to get overcrowded by competing plants. The next one on my list is called Tottering by Gently. It's a really nice name and I just love this rose really for its simplicity. It's a little bit more like almost a wild rose in terms of how the flowers look, being just a single flower in a canary yellow. It grows really nicely and it has a nice tea scent to it as well. One benefit about tottering by gently is it also has nice red rose hips, so you're getting some winter interest there as well. The last one on my list is called Comte de Champagne and is a beautiful, soft apricot colour. It really has an elegance to it, this rose, a bit like its name. This rose has a musk smell unlike a lot of the other shrub roses and to me it's a really beautiful scent and makes this one stand out from the crowd. It's not the strongest grower so I probably wouldn't put it in the middle of a mixed border like you can with Lady of Shalott, but it's such a beautiful plant it more than holds its own in a pot or just by itself. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe and I'd really love to know what your favourite David Austin roses are in the comments section. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram, it's mjdearman underscore photography. Until next time, enjoy the wildlife in your garden.